The pose library in Blender lets you save rig poses for future use and it's essential for efficient animation work. It's commonly used for saving hand poses and facial expressions, but you can create full body poses or whatever you like. The pose library is built on top of Blender's asset browser, which I made an extensive video about. So in this video, I'm going to assume that you understand how to work with the asset browser, but if you don't, please watch the previous video. We're going to start creating pose assets in a second. First, let's make sure that everything is in order. I am using Blender 3.51, so make sure that you're using a recent version of Blender. Next, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and search for Pose, and make sure that the Pose library is enabled. So the Pose library is implemented as an add-on that extends the Asset Browser, and it should be enabled by default, but just check to make sure that it is. Next, you also need a rigged character. Currently, the only type of poses that you can save are those of an armature in Pose mode. And finally, let's organize the interface a little bit. I'm going to need an asset browser. In this timeline, I'm going to switch to Dope Sheet Action Editor. Then go to Pose Mode for your rig and go to the Animation tab. This interface setup is just for the presentation. It's probably not optimal for animation work. So once you understand how things work, you should set things up as you like. And finally, we also need a camera in the scene. So I'm going to create a quick camera and position it roughly here. Now let's create and save some poses. The first space that allows you to do that is the action editor. So expand the side panel here, select your rig and go to pose mode. Now I'm going to create a quick fist pose. Then select the relevant bones. Only the bones you select will become part of the pose. So be careful what you select. And then you need to click the Create Pose Asset button. But currently it is grayed out. So this is because we have an asset browser. Um, if I close this asset browser, it will become available. Or if I have the asset browser, I have to switch from All to Current File. And then I'll be able to use this button. So this can be a little bit unintuitive, but but it is meant to prevent user errors, so just keep it in mind. Now press the Create Pose Asset button, and several things happened at once. First, we got this new action called Armature. We have some keyframes. We have a new asset of the action type in the Asset Browser, and we see the same asset in the sidebar in the Animation tab. This is one of the things that the Pose Library add-on does. It creates this tab here. So by creating the Pose Asset in this way, I'm now able to keep tweaking this pose. For example, I can tweak the position of the thumb if I don't like it, and then I just have to press I and record a rotation keyframe, and that will override this keyframe. So these keyframes here are where the pose is saved. So a pose asset is actually an action in which all keyframes are saved on the same frame. In this case, on frame zero, but they can be here as well. It doesn't matter as long as all keyframes are at the same spot. Now, if I change the name of this action to fist, you'll see that the name of the pose asset also changed. I can also expand the end panel here and change the name as well. And that will change the name of the actions. So we have our first pose asset. Let's talk about the preview. Currently it is showing the whole character and that is because this active camera is looking at the whole character. An easy way to move this camera to point at the fist is to navigate to the fist and then press Control, Alt and Numpad 0 and that will focus the camera on here. You can also go to View and enable Camera to View and that will allow you to move the camera in the same way that you navigate in the viewport. Also switch the resolution to something square like thousand by thousand. Zoom in on the fist and then you can come in here on the side panel of the asset browser and just press the refresh button and that will quickly update the preview. Now let's select these bones and press Alt R. And now if I just double click this asset, it will be applied here. It can be done from the pose library as well but we are going to talk about applying the poses in more depth a little bit later in the video. So let's move on to creating more actions. 
I'm going to reset this hand pose and let's create a pose where the character is pointing using the index finger. Again, select all controls that you want to be part of this pose. And let's actually unlink the fist pose asset. And another way to save a pose asset is to go to the asset browser, asset menu, and choose create pose asset. And that will create our index finger pose asset. And you will notice that this asset was not applied in the action editor. So the result is the same. The only difference is that you don't get to edit the pose immediately. So if you want to edit the pose, you'll have to enable it from here. Again, I can rename the pose by changing the action name or the name field in here. Now I can make edits, record the keyframes, and maybe update the preview. And that's our new pose. Let's unlink it and reset everything. And let's create another pose. Let's make something like a peace sign. Again, select all relevant controls. And now another way to create a pose is to simply create a new action, give it a name, record your keyframes, then right click on the action name and mark as asset. And you'll see that it will appear here as a new pose asset. So that was a manual way to create a pose asset. I don't necessarily recommend it, but I think it is nice to see how things work under the hood. So pressing the create pose asset button simply does all of these steps in one click. It creates a new action, records the keyframes and marks the action as an asset. So these are the main ways to create poses manually, but there is also a special workflow for extracting poses from existing animations. So here I'm going to assign an animation that I already have. It's an actual animation, not a pose. So if I find a pose that I like, I can press the create pose asset button and that unlink the active animation and temporarily assign this new pose asset. So now I can rename it. And if I wanted to, I can edit it a little bit here. Once I'm done editing, I have to record keyframes. I can place my camera and update my preview. And once I'm done, I can go back to my previous animation by just pressing this go back button. Okay. And now if I scrub, this will be the animation that I had before. I can find another pose, create pose asset, name it, edit it if I wanted to, update the preview, and once I'm done, click this button, and I'm back to the animation. And another special workflow is this copy pose as asset button. So I can press this button and then go to asset and paste as new asset. But doing this here in this same scene is kind of pointless because I can just use the create pose asset button here or here. Instead, this button is meant to copy poses from one blender scene into another. So here I have another blender scene with the exact same rig. And if I apply another animation that I have and find a pose that I like, I can just select all of the bones that I want to copy a pose for expand this end panel here in the action editor and click on copy pose as asset. Then I'll go back to my original file where I'm creating my collection of poses and in the asset browser, use the asset menu, paste as new asset. And I've created the pose asset, but without a preview. So let's go back to the other blend file, create a camera, position it, And again, select all bones and copy pose as asset. Go to my asset collection, right click on this file and I want to clear asset. And then again, I'm going to paste. And that pasted this copied pose, including the preview that we got from the camera from the other file. And that's a very cool workflow. Let's rename this action. And now let's talk about tweaking the existing actions. 
I already kind of covered it a minute ago, but let's emphasize the workflow in the action editor, find the pose that you want to tweak and activate it. Go to the frame where you have all of the keyframes, tweak the pose, and don't forget to record your keyframes. And by just recording the keyframes, the actual pose has been updated. To update the preview, you just click this button and the preview will be updated as well. Now that we have some poses, let's start using them. I'm going to clean up my scene a little bit, unlink this pose asset, reset my rig, and now you should see your pose asset here in the asset library. And also, if you go to the animation tab, they should be visible here as well. So you can apply poses from the asset browser and from here. Both will work, but generally the workflow is much better here in the viewport. For example, if I want to assign a pose from here, I can double click and not assign the pose. Or if I undo, I can right click and apply pose. But from the side panel, I just need to click and that will assign the pose in one click. Also here, I can right click and choose blend pose and start dragging to gradually go from the current pose to the final pose. But in the side panel, I just need to click on the pose and start dragging. I find the side panel easier to use. So let's make some space here and let's see what we can do. Again, single click will apply the whole pose, but the selection matters. So if I have everything selected or nothing selected, then a single click will apply the whole pose. But if I just have some of the bones that have to do with this pose selected and click on this pose here, only the selected bones will be posed. Let's undo and deselect everything. Another important thing is that you can right click and choose apply pose flipped. And that will apply this pose on the other hand. So for a symmetrical character, you only have to create a pose for one side of the character and then you can just flip the pose for the other side. Again, you can drag on a pose to start blending from the current pose to the final pose, and if you hold control, that will start affecting the opposite side of the rig. So that is how you blend the flipped pose. And again, selection matters here, so if I just select some of the bones and start dragging and hold control, only the selected bones will be affected. And that's more or less it for applying poses. It's fairly simple and intuitive, I think. If you right click, you can also select the pose bones. So select all of the bones that are part of this pose. I don't see an option to select the bones on the other side, but you can always go to select, select um, mirror and the bones on the other side will be selected. You can also use extend to have both sides selected and so on. So that is about selection. I can also right click and deselect pose bones and that will select these original pose bones that I had used in this pose. So the final important topic is how to save and reuse these assets. If you understand the asset browser, you should understand that these assets that we have here were saved as local assets. Local means that they are just part of this blend file, but if I open another blend file, they won't be in the asset browser. When you talk about pose assets, they actually kind of make sense as local assets. I can keep working in this scene and apply these poses whenever I need them. But if you want to turn them into global assets, that can certainly be useful and it is very easy to do. Just go to Edit, Preferences, File Paths, find the asset library that you want to use. In my case, I'll use My Assets and note the path that it uses. So I'm going to copy it. Um, I have to go here to File, Save As, paste the path in here. And here I can just save this um, file as poses or I can also create a subfolder and save the file in here, right? And create a fresh Blender scene, open the asset browser and here if I switch to my assets and go to unassigned, I'm going to find all of these pose assets that I just created. And that's nice, but you also have to keep in mind what these poses can be applied to. That will be obvious to advanced users. You can only really apply these actions 
to a rig that has the same structure, so the same bone names as your original rig that you created the poses with. For example, here I have a random rig mesh. It has fingers. But applying these actions is unlikely to work because the bone names are different. So I have to use a compatible rig. Here I have another Miximo character. So if I go to animation and I have to switch to my assets and I'll find my pose assets. Now, if I apply the fist to this character, it will work perfectly fine. I can do it on the other side as well. Index is fine and this piece sign will also work. And even the full body poses will work here because we're using IK and the proportions of the characters are a little bit different. The IK pose didn't uh, transfer quite well, but if I just push these controls a little bit, it will be fixed. So aside of the names and hierarchy of the bones, there's something else that you may want to keep in mind. Here I have another Miximo character, so it's again very similar. If I go to my pose assets, I should be able to apply the fist and the other hand poses. But if I try the full body pose, you'll see this crossing of the arms. And that most likely means a difference in the rest pose between the two rigs. In this case, I think there is a difference in the bone roll of the arms. So that is something that you may want to keep in mind. The pose library is a good opportunity for creating pose asset packs, especially for common rigs such as Rigify, Autorig Pro and Mixamo. You can share those packs with the community or even sell them. I was thinking of making one myself, but I probably won't have time for it. So if someone out there wants to create something like that, let me know. I'm happy to help you develop and promote it.